live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2017. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. I'm Stu Miniman here with my co-host Keith Townsend and you're watching wall-to-wall -wall coverage on VMworld 2017 on theCUBE here in Las Vegas. You know, third day of programming, we've done so many interviews, a lot of people went to parties last night, uh, you know, up early for, for lots of executive meetings, but you know, we go strong through the whole show because we've got great guests. So happy to welcome to the program, first time guest, Peter Fitzgibbon, Vice President and General Manager with Rackspace, and welcome back to the program, Ajay Patel Thank you, Steve. Uh, with, with VMware. Great Thanks. to be here. All right, so, so, so Peter, you know, Rackspace, Interesting transformation uh, over the last few years. Uh, you know, we've had theCUBE at OpenStack uh, yep. for, for, for a bunch of years. I've heard almost no discussion of OpenStack this week at the show. Um, I'm not I, complaining. I, I, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I've, I've talked to Rackers though at reInvent. You have, you know, uh, kind of reinvented, you know, the, the, the business there. Um, but the VMware partnership is one that's been going on for many years. Uh, so some people I talk to don't understand. I mean, this is a sizable business uh, that you've been yep. doing. I, I said, you know, let's measure the rack space managed VMware business against the entire revenue stream of OpenStack outside of what Rackspace does. Yep. Uh, you know, and uh, it, it's an interesting comparison. Yeah, so, so tell us about so the company. Rackspace continues yeah. to be the multi-cloud company, offering our customers the choice and flexibility they want. So our, our OpenStack practice continues to, to grow strong and we continue to invest there. And our, as we do in our, in our VMware practice, which we have a great partnership with uh, Ajay and his team over the last uh, 10 plus years. All right. Uh, you know, so for us, uh, the partnership's only going stronger. And you know, if you walk around the VMworld with all the banners, you walk into the airports, the investment Rackspace is making around VMware technology, I couldn't be much more happier. So thank you for that. Yeah. Appreciate that. So Peter, Rack, to Stu's point, Rackspace has been part of the VMware community for a long time. I've run into a couple of Rackers mm -hmm. on the show floor, talked through, kind of what they're doing hands with their feet on the ground, great work. Can you talk through the relationship with the customer yep. to this point? I mean, Rackspace known for fanatical support. How has that conversation changed over the past three years or so as we've gone through this changing VMware strategy to where we're at today? Yeah, we're continuing to try to support the customer on whichever technology they really want to land on. So it, it starts with the planning and analysis phase that we sit with customers and analyzing their workloads and trying to figure out where, what's the best fit for them outside of determining is it OpenStack, is it VMware, is it uh, or fanatical support on top of AWS. From a VMware perspective, we're really helping people determine how to move out of the data center, or at least, at least not extend the data centers as, as they have them right now. Uh, we recent, recently launched our Rackspace private cloud, powered by VMware Cloud Foundations. Yep. We went into general availability last week, so that's a, a global effort that we're, we're discussing with our clients, and it's proving a very attractive option for those looking for an alternative to uh, uh, their own private cloud and move into a hosted private cloud model. Yeah, P Peter, it, that operating experience is one of the things that customers have been yeah. challenged with. And Rackspace, you know, known for, you know, they, they, they know how to do this. Talk to us about some of the, the, this journey as to how your customers are seeing things. Uh, you know, Rackspace has had a, a few different private cloud options. You yeah. talked about, you, you, give, you give your customers choice, but what's different now in 2017 and what's the, the mindset of your customers? Yeah, we, we continue to offer 20, 24 by 7, 365 fanatical support. It's what we really true, see as our true differentiator in the market, or we have 150 certified VMware Rackers on the team that really go beyond above and beyond every single day for these customers. And looking not just at how to migrate them to our private cloud, but how to optimize them when we're there. When, we're on, uh, when, when they've landed on, on a VMware private host, hosted cloud solution, how do we really optimize it and really get the full value of the technology? And, and th these are expensive and difficult technologies to use. So we want to make sure people are really in the true value out of NSX and vSAN and, and now with VCF, which we're really excited about. Yeah, for us, it's, you know, as we were speaking, I mean, the biggest challenge is the constraints are skilled resources. Yeah. Having 150 specialists out there with fanatical support with the great VMware technology and the standardization. You know, in some ways, a VMware cloud announcement is kind of making the awareness that you have a cloud stack that you can now get through even a Rackspace private cloud. So for us, it's really all boats are rising as a result, and now having the skill capability to then accelerate the deployment and delivery and operations is pretty exciting. 
So Ajay, can you talk a little bit about working with Rackspace specifically? Because Rackspace has a, uh, has a tradition of having a very pronounced way of, of supporting customers. Whether you're a uh, Fortune 500 or you're a small mom and pop shop, Rackspace is going to come with uh, full engineering might and, and help build the most reliable solution. And that comes with kind of, a, I, I would imagine, a predisposed position on something like uh, VCF, uh, uh, VMware Cloud Foundation. What has, been, what has it been like oh, to engineer? I'll, I'll speak the best thing from one of the joint customers that we had the opportunity to be on a panel with, uh, Shortel, right? And it was interesting to say how Shortel said, Rackspace is part of their operating team. So they were involved upfront in terms of having a partner who can help them with the choice. They made the selection based on the SLAs to support, but more importantly, they're just an extension of the operating team. And being able to have a single team manage both the on-prem and the cloud without having to build a separate kind of cloud team, that was a critical piece of, of, uh, of uh, this decision. And so kind of this common operating model with able to seamlessly augment with skill set, you know, that was really what resonated for Shortel and was the reason they the chose The operating model is something I was just going to go to in, in right. terms of really helping people figure out how they're going to live in this multi-cloud world you, across multiple different technology stacks and that's what our fanatical support is intended to be, to really be an extension of, their, uh, of a homegrown IT team so we can really get the full benefit of these complicated technologies. All right, P Peter, you talked multi-cloud and yeah. one of the things we talk to customers is a lot of times, uh, they had, say they have a cloud strategy, but how they got there wasn't necessarily as planful as mm -hmm. they might have liked. Okay. Uh, I, I had somebody writing for, for Wikibon a couple years ago, said we have composite cloud, because you kind of look at it, and you always said, you know, do I have Amazon? Yeah, everybody does, you know? Uh, oh, I've got some app that somebody needed on GCP. Um, Rackspace is, is a managed service provider for a lot of different pieces. How do you help customers get their arms around it, you know, and you know, maybe, maybe talk about the, the VMware on, and Amazon, the VMC stuff. H how do you look at that in the future? How does that tie into kind of the skill set yeah, that your so, team so, has? So we often see customers coming in with that com composite cloud yeah. situation <laughs> where they're like, we, we, we think we're multi-cloud, we're not truly. Because they don't have a defined strategy about why they put certain workloads in certain places. It just grew up orga organically, often through lines of business. Um, VMC on AWS is a really exciting offer for us and that we're going to be launching into in early 2018 and really gives more choice to our customers in, ter in terms of where they're going to run their workloads, be it running them uh, in different availability zones that Rackspace doesn't cover, or potentially uses a Dior solution. So let's dive into that composite cloud statement. I really love that, that <laughs> comment. What, uh, Cloud, multi-cloud is one of those things, you don't know you don't have a multi-cloud until you don't know you don't have a multi-cloud. Right. What are some of the surefire indicators that customers are in a more composite cloud uh, experience or environment versus a true multi-cloud? Like, what, are, what is that conversation like? Yeah, well, what's a good best practice, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think there isn't a lot of good best practices from our customers' point of view. I think they, they often come in and, and we lay out their, look at their architectures, look at their different applications, and they're often just, the, the central IT doesn't know where most of it is running half the time. So it's really like, okay, let's look at each part of this and decide for you what's the best fit. Where should it go? Should we be putting something on Azure or Azure Stack? Should it be better suited to OpenStack? Or is it you're, they're very familiar with VMware and they want to continue to, to leverage VMware either on a host and model or internally in their own data center? I mean, what we're learning is they just don't have visibility. So the biggest interest and in the demand when we launched our cross cloud or cloud ser services, the notion of having visibility of what's running where. And the second question is how much is it costing me? And what can I move and what are the data security you know, leakages that are put in place because these things weren't controlled. So those are kind of just knowing, right? Know where your data is, know where your workloads are, and how much are they costing you. That's the first baseline they're looking for help on. Yeah. Once they've got that, then they're like, okay, how do I still provide some level of self-service and control to the end user while putting some structure by which I can go to a, a multi-cloud strategy? So that's the journey we're just about to see with IT coming into the yeah, play. Right? Peter, I, I have to imagine you have an interesting viewpoint on the ecosystem. Since, you know, Rackspace, I, I think I understand better now than a few years ago what, what services you did. Uh, VMware just launched a bunch of SaaS offerings. There was some, some launched last year. Um, I can't count how many companies are helping people with cloud cost management, you know, licensing, you know, you, you, you name it, 12 different aspects to 
take bites out of this giant elephant of multi-cloud uh, and do that. What are the biggest pain points you're hearing from customers? How, how do, do you help advise some of them as yeah, to and bring some of the pieces together? And it's not even what we see from a customer standpoint. Is if you think of Rackspace, we have to integrate all these clouds sure. into our own internal systems. So we get to experience it firsthand as the customer, how we create unified billing systems, how we have unified monitoring, how we uh, in integrate all our own legacy systems to deal with these clouds. So we, we effectively learn from integrating into our own systems and can advise our customers on the pain points we've seen and bring them on that journey to help them through their true multi-cloud uh, approach. So if we blow it out and customer comes to you and they, they want a multi-cloud strategy and you, know, you kind of show them the ugly, you show them the truth for where they're yeah. at, what's, what's the next step? Like from a practical, tactical perspective, yeah. what, what's like step one to helping assess applications and et cetera for viability for each one of the Rackspace offerings. Yeah, so we have a framework which we call PADMO. It's Plan, Analyze, Design, Migrate, op op Optimize. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a second to get the last part out. <laughs> and trying to, the planning stage is really it where we, we sit with the customer and decide, okay, wh what does your environment look like and, and why is it that way? Were, were things made in a conscious decision or did it just happen organically? So try to figure out what do they do intentionally and what what just grew up organically, and then move from there into designing or, or analyzing what's best fit for the different different uh, cloud strategies, and then start designing it, migrating it, and then effectively optimizing it when they land on Rackspace and show the value of our 24/7, 365 fanatical support. Yeah, yeah I, for I, us I, it's I, about I, you know I, for I, us as a technology partner, we want to enable the core VMware foundation, but we also believe the network connectivity is the next big thing. So things like NSXT is something we're already having conversation with. Like how are we going to stitch these clouds together? How do we make it more software defined so as we move towards this kind of policy driven you know, management abstraction, how do we then open up the different clouds and surface that capability? So that's a really the next journey for both of us from VCF or VMware Cloud Foundation to the broader multi-cloud And Andre, you're uh, you know, cloud provider partners. What, what about services? Is there any joint engagement or things that VMware helps write that, that, that are deployed through So partners? one of the big uh, services we're all kind of come, coming together is on DR. Right? You're consistently the easy step to get to a hybrid or, or starting to leverage cloud is uh, disaster recovery. What if we made that a native feature of the VMware stack? We can have our customer right click on a VM and protect it with one of these service provider clouds. That's an example of something we're trying to kind of generalize. Now, on each of them, the complexity of operating it, the scale, the visibility, the service levels, those are unique to each partner, but we're trying to make sure the platform gives you this basic capability to go capture workloads. And I feel like DR is, is central to everyone's roadmap, right? Uh, mo most of our customers, nearly all our customers are requiring DR when they, when, they, when they land on Rackspace, and we're really looking into that in our 2018 roadmap to see how we make DR as a service uh, consistently part of the offering. So what works well and what doesn't work well? When you go through that initial set of complications, so, so DR is a great example of, oh, this is low hanging fruit. We, you, we either don't have a DR that's working or we don't have it's DR. Costing, costing me too much. Yeah, right? at all. Yeah. And there's kind of this, you know, when you whiteboard it, it works extremely well. What are some of the practical business challenges yeah. that you see customers experience on yeah. that journey? Th there's definitely some easy options to move first for customers. Dior is a common one that we see. Um, dev test as well in terms of, okay, how can you test out our environments and, and do it in a low risk way? There are always going to be those more core applications, those mission critical applications applications that people will wait till the end before they migrate. So let's migrate some to Rackspace Private Cloud. Let's see how it operates, uh, maybe as a DR environment, or as a dev environment, test environment. And then as they build confidence and see what fanatical support we offer, then they start moving more mission critical workloads. And I, I share the same, right? Tier one, usually it's high availability, high design, high touch. Tier two, often ignored. Too expensive, too hard. We're trying to go after the two year, two tier three apps and just provide a convenient cloud economics for protecting those workloads. Yeah. Peter, I'm curious, how often are customers trying one thing and then moving it to another? Uh, you know, I, I get calls all the time, you know, <laughs> data gravity, of course, is it's a big issue, critical, but yeah. you know, if I'm building an application, sometimes it's like, oh wait, you know, maybe this isn't the best place to live. Lots of customers, you know, will build one place and run production in another place. We, we, you know, we've seen that, you know, how, how much is mobility a concern? Is lock-in still a challenge? You know, how much, you know, what's real and what's yeah, not? Yeah, I, I think lock-in is, is still a challenge, but we're certainly looking into how we're helping our customers move from one cloud to the other. We, we continue working work in our different business units across Rackspace, be it VMware, AWS, Azure, OpenStack, and, and see how we can offer flexibility for customers. When they realize they've gone too far on one or another, we're not seeing specific use cases of 
everybody moving from one to another. It's more, more of a pick and choose, and so we're helping customers migrate from one to another as, as needed. So I, I'd be interested to know how, what, not percentage, or what type of customer kind of has this hybrid IT or hybrid cloud approach in Rackspace where they build cloud native applications and then connect them to a VCF or a VMware or private cloud. And I think more specifically, I think the, the question that I would like to get at is, is that a real thing that, not necessarily a real thing, is that, is that impacting friction between the public cloud with cloud native applications and your ability to manage that and add that fanatical support and the developer looking to consume that and integrate it to VMware? Um, no, we're, I'm, I'm not seeing that friction between, between the different technologies. I think we're, we're at Racks, we should try work across all of them to offer the choice to our clients as, uh, and our customers as much as possible. Make sure we really offer them the best choice and put the workloads in where they really are best suited to run. I mean, our position is you know, container and microservice architecture are going to provide an extra frameworks and tools. The maturity is still in the works. Mm -hmm. And our goal is to say, can we make you know, either VM or physical be a best place to deploy? And what are the tools and capabilities you need to provide? So for us, networking, security, those are kind of fundamental problems regardless you're building a cloud native app or a traditional app. And how do we insert our value into the equation versus trying to own the whole solution, right? Right, well, Peter Fitzgibbons, thank you so much for getting the update on Rackspace. And uh, Ajay, always a pleasure. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to remember what the five-time <laughs> award is. We'll talk to John Furrier, <laughs> make sure we have it ready for the next time we have you on. Uh, for Keith Townsend, I'm Stu Miniman. This is VMworld 2017, and you are watching theCUBE. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Jens. <laughs>